Okay guys, imagine this outfit, but with me in maybe black pantyhose and a nice pair of flat shoes that will be conducive to, you know, me being able to dance and whatever. Um, I asked my musician, I said, are you gonna, are we gonna dance? Are you gonna dance at that wedding? He's like, meh, the music moves me. But he's not my boyfriend. I mean, he, he's not gonna say I can't dance with someone else if they ask me. You know what I mean, guys? There's nothing wrong with this wearing at a wedding. I just bought this shirt. Um, got it for a fantastic price. I know what my musician ex was thinking. He's probably, when I said, well, can I just... He, I said, do I have to get a dress? He's like, well, you should kind of dress up. This is dressy. I'm going to get a nice pair of flat, pretty shoes. Um, I have size 11 wide feet, so kind of hard for me to find decent shoes, you know. There's a place, I forget what it's called, uh, D something, or I don't know what it's called, but you know, I don't even know if they... 11 wide is hard to find. You know, it really is. Um, but I just showed my mom, she thought it was beautiful. This was on the mannequin in the store, and um, I'm like, oh, that is so beautiful, that top. The belt is what made it. She, and the sales girl, when she was young, she was like, yeah, that's why. I, I said, you know what, this top would just be, like, cute if it was like this, but the belt. She's like, yeah, that's why I put it on the mannequin. You can't tell off of it. It's the belt that makes it. The belt. Belt just makes it turns it into something beautiful. And this is a nice skirt. It was sixty bucks at Express, but I bought two of them. This different one, size ten. This might be a little a bit shorter, but in any case, so I got them one for fifty percent off. So I paid forty five each.
if we lose another 10, I wouldn't be trying. I'm going to change my whole diet. I'm going to start taking. I'm going to learn what he took to clean out his system. He studies all this crap. He knows the good stuff from the crap. He's done trial and error for years, so. I haven't seen him for five years almost. He invited me down, just, he's such a good guy, you know. He invited me to come stay with him. And I had no money, so he paid for everything. I stayed three weeks. It was a retreat after Donald nearly killed me. Didn't care. Uh, Donald doesn't see it that way any more than his mom does. Him, it was an accident. He accidentally shoved me away from him. He didn't, and he didn't intend for me to go down the hill, but I learned from the emergency domestic violence shelter caseworker, the minute somebody puts their hands on you, Laura, they've committed a crime. It doesn't matter that they don't intend for you to die or to something to happen you to stumble and smash your head or whatever. The fact is, the minute they put their hands on you, they've committed a crime. See, Donald and his mom have brainwashed me into not even thinking that, you know. I would always say, well, he didn't mean for me to nearly die going flying backwards down that hill and blacking out unconscious and lump this big in the back of my head and thinking I was going to die and whatnot and I should have been dead. You know? Um, no, the second someone puts their hands on you whether they intentionally want something bad to happen to you or not, the second he shoved me away, you understand in California there's lots of low rail bridges that go down to a highway. I would have been dead. I should have been dead as I was going backwards down that hill. I was like, wow. All those risks I took when I was younger and I never died and I'm going to die at the hands of the man who eight years ago I believed was my savior, was my soulmate, was going to, had come into my life. To make it better. <laughs>